I host my own site with all the bandwidth for hundreds of educational videos about Amanita and other entheogens at amanitadreamer.net. It's completely free. I don't ask you for an email or anything. Just go watch the videos. To support that then, I have mushroomvoice.com and that's my store. And in my store is my book on how to dose Amanita and what to expect. This is the hardcover. I have several videos about Amanita and THC, CBD, that kind of thing. But the more research that I do and the more anecdotal information that I gather, um, it's kind of gotten to a point now where I really needed to make another video to catch you up on what I'm learning. There's very little science to go on. Everything that I'm telling you is me looking at the emerging science in one and in the other, and then putting them together with ideas and hypothesis, hypotheses and then anecdotal information and talking to people over the last two years about this subject. So there are no citations on any of the things that I'm about to say, and none of this is medical advice. So when I first started doing this, there were so many people that didn't get anything out of Amanita, and I spent an entire year questioning these people. And the one thing that came up among all of them, I would say 98% to grab a random number out of my head, is that they were using THC on a semi to regular basis. And in looking at it, I believe that there are issues in the gating in the endocannabinoid system, but also THC will downregulate glutamate and GABA in favor of boosting dopamine. These are just three things of the many things that the endocannabinoid system does. And Amanita will boost glutamate and GABA and I think dopamine, but I don't think it's clear cut and that black and white. I think it's a bell curve of sorts where most people are gonna be in that middle and then there's outliers. I also believe that many people that are using weed, marijuana, cannabis, they're using it to quiet the loud thoughts in their head. A lot of us, especially neurodiverse people, ADD, autism, all of these different ranges on the neurodiverse spectrum have very loud, constant running thoughts in our heads and it never shuts up. There are some people that it helps calm their anxiety. There are some people that use it to treat ADD, ADHD. There are some people that say they just really come into focus and begin to function on cannabis. But here's the thing, all of the receptors and neurotransmitters that control those things, I think, Amanita does also. The downside for cannabis use is it will downregulate sleep and dreaming. It reduces the amount of time that you spend in theta waves, which is how you heal your body. And it suppresses your REM sleep, which can really make you start to feel draggy and tired. It also reduces your ability to write memory to short-term and long-term, which means it is affecting your ability to learn, whereas Amanita actually boosts both of those things. And many people tell me that when they want to experience Amanita because they're tired of not experiencing it or they're, they're curious about it or they wanna trip on it, they wean off of THC using Amanita and in that crossover experience, they say their life just gets better because it seems like Amanita is healing the things that cannabis was healing. Plus now they learn faster, they get into higher, better creative states and they get to keep that on board all the time. And now they're sleeping better, they're going in theta better and they're REM sleeping better. Making the connection from one to the other is me and two years of anecdotal information. Now, why do some people regularly smoke it and also are fine and get everything that they wanna feel out of Amanita? Again, I'm gonna say outliers. The way that I'm an outlier in that uh, THC seems to truly bottom out those neurotransmitters for me. Perhaps in other parts of the endocannabinoid system, THC is not bonding to some of those receptors that Amanita does bond to. So there's entire other parts to all of this because the glutamate channels 
use some of the cholinergic receptors in the, in the choline pathways. So it will affect acetylcholine. Part of the acetylcholine pathways are the muscarinic receptors and the nicotinic receptors. And those are also crossovers. So there is a lot of crossover in the receptors between these two drugs. I just don't know. There is no science on oral use of Amanita in the human body. Like zero, none. We, we're not even in kindergarten on it. There's just nothing. So learning what all of this is going to be in the future, it's a long way off, but it's very exciting. But one day we'll know just as much about it as we do today about THC. And I believe all of these things are going to be some of the first rudimentary things that we learn. But it'll be exciting to find out exactly which parts of the endocannabinoid system this crossover is and why is it that in most people it seems like THC grabs on, it's more oil-based, less water-based, and it hangs on for a long time and takes a, and blocks those receptors from Amanita in most people. I understand if you're an outlier, you're an outlier. If you are not a regular user, and if you use weed and get nothing from Amanita, when you wean off of it, whatever, if we're creating a clear pathway there where there's no occlusion at all, you can actually stack the two. So it seems to me order of use is a thing. So if you're using weed first, maybe for the, a couple of days, you're not going to get as much out of Amanita. But if you haven't been using it in your life for the last six weeks and you've actually weaned it out of your life, then you can use the two simultaneously and people report having really heightened, beautiful experiences, which I can't try to tell you about because of the horrible, horrible panic that I get. From, I'm just not even willing to try. Maybe one day when I get brave, I'll try. And technically, full conversion should help that. Here's what I don't know. All the people who say, I have a great experience. I use THC and I, have, and I feel Amanita. I don't know if they're talking about ibotenic acid, like just dried Amanita, breaking off pieces of it. I don't know if they're talking about a 50-50 conversion, my tea, which is what I teach about in this book, how to make the tea. I talk about Ibo and cold water extraction. I talk about the tea. I talk about trip dosing, macro dosing, full conversion, all of that in this book. But the bulk of the book talks about the tea. And then lastly, are these people that say that they use weed and still get something from Amanita, is it possible they're doing full muscimol conversion experiences? And this is the thing that I see most of the time when people say, this affects me this way, this doesn't affect me this way, this works, that doesn't work, is the, the common theme is no one's talking about which drug are you referring to with the amanita mushroom. Are you talking about ibotenic acid, a 50-50 decarb like with the tea, or a full conversion muscimol? This is all highly complex, and we don't have human studies, and there are outliers for everything when we're talking about such complex systems like the fight or flight, the cholinergic system, which affects your nervous systems upside, and then glutamate, which affects the brain and, and the, the body, and the cholinergic systems, which will affect the adrenal system, but also attention and learning and visual acuity and creativity and high gamma flow states and calm states. All of these things are so complex and when you add in your experience and whether it was Ibo, the T5050, full muscimol, you've got to take all of this into consideration. I'm not telling you to do anything to get off of cannabis, to get on Amanita. I'm not telling you that what you're experiencing is right or wrong. I'm not telling you to stack the two and go experiment with it. The only reason I'm making this video is to just keep educating and informing about what I'm learning there was nothing on the internet when I first started. Everything that you're reading on the internet now about all of these things is because I'm saying it, putting it out there, and asking for more science, more studies, more information. And these are the kinds of intelligent and fascinating conversations we get into in the community at mushroomvoice.com.
please subscribe because YouTube does not push my videos and I need your help to reach other people who could use this medicine. I love beautiful people. Bye.